this lecture, we're going to discuss seizures in children. What are seizures? Seizures are an uncontrolled firing of nerves in the brain. If involving both cerebral hemispheres, seizures are generalized. It's the whole body. If involving one hemisphere or one area, it may be focal, involving one extremity or one simple area of the body. In young infants, seizures may be very subtle and look very different than in older folks. They can be just little jittery movements, and sometimes they're missed by doctors and parents alike. Let's talk first about status epilepticus. Status epilepticus is frequent or recurrent or prolonged seizures without returning to baseline in a 30-minute period. It can be convulsive or non-convulsive with few symptoms and usually focal. So seizures in general affect about 1% of the population, but febrile seizures, which we'll get to at the end of this talk, affect a much larger part of the population, 4 to 10% of children. And 15% of children who have a first seizure have another within the next year. So recurrence actually isn't that common, at least not right away. Many children have one seizure and never have another one, and we never know why it happened. Seizures are different depending on where they are in the brain. A frontal lobe seizure may result in bizarre behavior. A temporal lobe seizure may result in depression or mood affect changes. But a generalized seizure is what we'd expect to see with motor movements predominantly appearing. Alteration of vital signs and respiratory suppression are absolutely possible during seizures. And after seizures, they may be, be a period of sleepiness called the post-ictal period. This is especially true for generalized seizures. Also after seizures, patient may develop a paralysis transiently of one side of the body, even if it's a generalized seizure, and that's called Todd's paralysis. Patients feel that they report they feel absolutely lousy after a seizure. So we know seizures are no fun to have, and we'd like to prevent them. The types of seizures can be categorized in many different ways. Tonic-clonic seizures are the ones which you classically see on television. An initial, a tonic phase of stiffening, and then a clonic phase of shaking. Patients usually fall down, they may have loss of bladder or bowel function, and they may be very sleepy afterwards, or have Todd's paralysis. They may just have a tonic phase in their seizure, or they may just have a clonic phase in their seizure. Myotonic jerks are a unique type of seizure that happens in children. Well, they, they will happen up to, say, 100 times a day, and it'll be a sudden jerking spasm of one arm or one extremity. Atonic akinetic seizures are literally a drop spell where there is a complete loss of tone and patients will collapse to the floor. And absence seizures are unique in that children will what we call space out. There will be a complete lack of awareness of the world and then they will pop right back in again without any postictal phase. It may be so subtle that children don't even know they're doing it, but are simply confused in the classroom because for them, the teacher is jumping forward in time. If you detect a seizure in a child, especially a tonic-clonic seizure, we have to be concerned that there may be other causes to this seizure. Infectious causes are numerable and include brain abscesses, encephalitis, again, they might just have a febrile seizure, Meningitis, neurosister sarcosis is an unusual cause from eating raw beef. Tuberculosis may cause calcified lesions in the brain that cause seizure. Toxoplasma, same thing. And HIV can cause an encephalitis that can cause seizures. Birth injuries can result in damage to the brain that can cause seizures. Congenital anomalies of the brain, such as polymicrogyria, can cause seizures. Degenerative cerebellar disease, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, tuberous sclerosis of the brain, these tubers can cause seizures. Neurofibromas can cause seizures. Patients who have shunts to drain excessive fluid may have misfunction of that drainage system. Those patients get acute hydrocephalus and may present with seizure, and hydrocephalus untreated can certainly present with seizure. There are many metabolic conditions that can present with seizures, such as hypercarbia and then the hypos, hypocalcemia, 
hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, and hypomagnesemia. Think of the hypos, calcium, glucose, sodium, magnesium. Inborn errors of metabolism may leave children prone to seizures, especially some of the metabolic disorders that are mitochondrial in nature, like MRF or Milos syndrome. Pyridoxine deficiency can also cause seizures, and sometimes a dose of vitamin B6 is the cure, especially in newborns. In traumatic or vascular disease, patients can get seizures from cerebral contusions, stroke, child abuse, trauma, or any cause of intracranial hemorrhage. Toxins can also cause seizures. Drugs of abuse, such as cocaine and methamphetamine, cause vascular constriction, which can cause ischemia of the brain and seizure. Lead poisoning can do it in severe cases, as can rarely organophosphates, salicylates, sympathomimetics, tricyclic antidepressants, or withdraw from drugs of abuse. Those can all cause seizures. And then once we've gone through all these causes, including oncologic causes, could it be a tumor, or obstetric causes, is the patient uh, have a baby inside them and now they have a problem with their liver and are getting seizures as a result, like preeclampsia. And then after we've ruled out all these other causes, we're left with epilepsy. So epilepsy is really a diagnosis of exclusion after you've ruled out all these other potential causes. Also keep in mind there are things that children do that look a lot like seizures, but in fact aren't. Breath-holding spells can be truly remarkable. These start around six months of age and go from, can go for several years. They usually happen when a child is upset or displeased or terrified. They just hold their breath, and they can hold their breath until they turn blue and literally pass out unconscious. Children tend to eventually outgrow this, and they have no long-term sequelae at all, but there's a lot of counseling that's needed for the families. Syncope can look like a seizure. Panic attacks are often mistaken for seizures, especially since when patients breathe very quickly, they get a respiratory alkalosis, and that can cause a carpal pedal spasm of the hands. If you see a patient that looks scared and has clenching of the fists, that's almost always a panic attack, and all that's required is calm. Tick disorders may look like a focal seizure. Keep in mind, ticks can be fairly complex. We have another talk about ticks later. Benign myoclonus is common in babies, and parents may bring in videos of their child doing shaking, video, shaking movements that they're concerned might be a seizure. Remember, it's common for babies to have an exaggerated startle reflex where their arms come out and they shake, and they're commonly these children will have brief shaking episodes or twitches of the arms and legs as they're falling asleep. People, adults, do that too. Dystonic reaction is an unusual side effect to certain medications, for example, Reglan, or some medicines for nausea. The dystonic reaction is a sudden spasm of the muscles that's relieved by IV Benadryl. It really is not a seizure. Patients may fake seizures in outright desire to get more attention, or they may be so stressed out that their body is seizing even though they're not actually having true seizures. We call these pseudo-seizures, and they're very common in adolescence. Likewise, night terrors, sleepwalking, narcolepsy, all of these things can be mistaken for seizures. <music>